Hello everyone. Uh, today we will discuss about how to send messages to individual accounts in MS Teams using Python. So consider this scenario shown here. Uh, let's say we have a bunch of messages that we need to send to some individual uh, MS Teams accounts. Maybe those messages are stored uh, in some DB or we might need to fetch those messages from APIs or some local file. So uh, this is how we could achieve this. First, we need to perform some initial setup. We need a Microsoft 365 business standard license for that. We need to have a system user and we also need to disable the MFA for that system user. So I already uh, created some users here. Let's have a look. So the system user for this is this one. Um, I have created this system user to transmit the messages. I have uh, set the display name as notifications to actually uh, create a field for a real use case. Okay, so I will use this user to actually transmit the messages and I have some other users as well. So this is my root user. I will not be using this one. So this is the user I will set up to receive the messages. So what will happen after running the Python script, this notifications user will send the messages to the user John Doe, which is a normal user. So as this user will transmit the messages, I have to disable the MFA. You can see in the authentication methods, there is no MFA in place. And for the other user, which is John Doe, um, we have MFA enabled here. So it also has a Microsoft Authenticator integrated. Those are our users. So let's go to the slide again. Now we have to register an app and we also have to provide some permissions. So let's uh, go through that process now. Let's go to the home page of Microsoft Enter Admin Center. From home, we should uh, navigate to the applications section here. And let's go to app registrations section. So let's go to all applications and we don't have any applications here right now. So I will click on register and applications button. And let's just provide a name here. And let's just keep the other setup as is. And just hit the register button. Okay, so we have successfully created the app. And now, according to the slide, we have to provide these two permissions from MS Graph API. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, let's click on API permissions. We already have one permission. Let's go and add other ones. So let's just select this one. And this is very important. We should always select the delegated permissions, okay? Not the application permissions. So we can see there are lots of permissions here. Let's search for our desired ones. So chat, okay. There is chat.create. Let's just add this. And let's go ahead and add the other one, which is chat message.send. Delegated permissions. Any... Okay. So there is this chat message dot send permissions. Let's add this one as well. So these are the permissions that we need for the script to work. We actually don't need this one, so just let's go ahead and remove this one. Okay. So this step is complete. Now let's go back to the slide. Now we have to grant admin consent for the API permissions. So let me explain this one. So what will happen? The script will act on behalf of this system's user. Okay. So that notification user that I have uh, showed you. Let's just go again. All right. So as I said, I will use this uh, notifications user uh, as the sender of the messages. Okay. So that's what the script will do. The script will act on behalf of this user. So we have to provide necessary permissions and grants for this to happen. So for this, what we need to do, we need to click on this grant admin consent for Argotelos. Let's just go ahead and grant this consent. Yes. Okay, it is done. So now we have to allow public client flow. So to allow public client flows, we need to go to uh, authentication section. And here is the allow public flow option. Okay, let's just go ahead and set yes. And then hit save. Okay, so these steps are complete now. So I think everything is set up for now. Let's go ahead and see what's in the next section.
All right. So now we have to write our code. Let's just go ahead and start coding. Okay. All right. So our app is set up. We need one value from this app setup page. It is client ID. Okay. We need to just copy this and use it on our code. I am using Google Colab here. So this is the client ID and I need username. This is your name. Let's copy the username from here and paste it here. We also name the password for this user. So we are using username password method for authentication and the password is and we need to install some packages so let's just go ahead and install this package all right so we also need to add uh requests okay this package is already installed in the collab environment that's good okay so let's just uh, see what is actually there for the authentication process uh, we need to use this class this class is available from azure uh, identity library and we also need to use this scope and those are the endpoints that we will be hitting for creating the chat and sending the messages so let's just copy this base url because this is the url for graph api let's also create a variable for the base url Okay, so I think those are the global variables that we will need. So let's just run this. Let's create uh, another section from Azure dot identity word. Okay. If we execute this line we will have a credential object and this credential object actually can be used to fetch the token let's provide the scope so this is the scope that we need to provide so this part is the base url and forward slash dot default is the scope part let's go ahead and just fetch the token now we'll use this credential object get token and then we need to actually use this token property to get the actual token and now just go ahead and print this all right so we are successfully able to actually fetch the token now so let's just go ahead and create the headers These are the headers that we will require. So let's just go ahead and create the payload that we need to send to Microsoft Graph API to create the chat. So for that, uh, we look at the Microsoft documentations. All right. So let's just copy this uh, payload and use it in our code. All right. Okay. Let's create a global variable. Oh. Right. And this is the value for this O data type and use this one instead of hard coding this each time. Uh, we need to specify the users we want to send the messages so this user will be our sender let's uh, paste it here and another user that we have john doe will receive the message so 
So let's copy his username and paste it here. This is called UPN or user principal name. Okay. I already uh, logged in into user accounts here. Let's have a look on those now. So this is the account of this notifications user and this is the user principal name okay so this name has to be matched here this is another user which is john doe's account and the user principal name for this account is this one and it should uh, the second item of this dictionary um, should match this one as well so how the flow works is first we need to create a chat object and then using the id of that chat object we need to actually send the messages search to create the chat object we have to send a post request so okay we need to actually convert it to a json object and then we'll be able to use this dictionary version let's run it again okay so this is the chat id that has been created so we will uh, send a message from this notifications user to this john doe user using this chat id The chat ID we just created previously. So that's the URL. Now we also have to provide the headers. The payload is ready now. All right. Fingers crossed. Let's just run this code. Okay. All right. We heard the notification bell there. So we were able to successfully send the message here. So this is the message that was sent from notification account to this user account, right? Okay, uh, let's send another message. Maybe this time there is another task that needs to be completed before deadline. Okay, let's just see how it goes. Uh, we need to run the code again. And let's see. All right, so we received another message and the code actually transmitted the notification successfully so yeah that's it guys uh, we can imagine more use cases uh, regarding this one as many companies in the world use team for internal communications so if there are some work use cases where some external notifications or reminders needs to be transmitted to internal workforce or staff this method can be utilized there as well so that's it for now if you guys have any suggestions or questions feel free to reach me out and if you think this is useful please share it with others as well so that's it thanks for watching this video take care